One of the big lessons the Trump administration is teaching America and indeed the world is one that I learned a long time ago and one you likely learned if you've been at this whole atheism thing for very long. Smart people tend to think of stupidity as a weakness, right? And to some degree, that's true. But as you get dumber and dumber, you eventually cross over this line where stupidity ceases to be a weakness and becomes a weapon. Consider George W. Bush. That guy was stupid, right? But, but like regular stupid. Now, don't get me wrong. He was a terrible person. He did evil shit, corrupted the nation's moral standing in a way few people have ever dreamed of. So I don't want to be one of those jackasses who starts looking at Bush through rose-colored glasses now that we've seen the world through Trump's nauseous orange hue. He is and remains a terrible moral stain on American history. I only bring him up now as an exemplar of stupidity, which is one of the few tasks he is well suited for. So Bush was undeniably stupid, right? Like you've got to imagine through most of his presidency, he was the dumbest guy in the room. And, and that was an obvious disadvantage to him throughout. It made it easier for other people in his administration to manipulate him and, and drive policy. It left him completely unprepared to deal with novel problems. It left his opponents with no end of ammunition against him and made him the butt of every joke in every late night monologue for eight fucking years. But he was just regular stupid. Right? He, was the, he was that guy who you have to explain the movie to in the parking lot, stupid. And, and that's the kind of stupid that leaves a person at a constant disadvantage. When you rely on other people to do your comprehending for you, you're obviously left at their mercy to some degree. I mean, you can mitigate that somewhat by getting a wide array of opinions, but if you're not smart enough to weigh them against each other, it, it only helps so much. Trump is a whole different kind of stupid, though. Right, He's that guy you could stand out there in a parking lot all fucking day and try to explain it all you want, but you'd be wasting your time and his, and he's probably going to get frustrated by that quicker than you are. And sure, there are plenty of disadvantages to that kind of stupidity, but it also comes with a few ticks in the plus column. It, you can't be left at the mercy of the people who comprehend for you if nobody does that. Right, I, like You can be manipulated, but it, it, it somehow gets harder when you get dumber. Right? If, if Bugs Bunny wants George W. Bush to look in the closet, he just stands in front of it and says, whatever you do, don't look in here, right? But if he tried that with Trump, Trump might just say, okay, or, or, or forget how opening closets work. Moderate stupidity is self-aware. It becomes a weakness in the, in the way it rattles one's confidence, right? But pure stupidity is stupid with complete abandon. Trump is never slowed down by self-doubt or the nagging feeling that everybody else knows something he doesn't. He doesn't even know what knowing something would entail. How can he fear somebody else doing it? But perhaps the biggest way that profound stupidity like Trump's can become an advantage is when it forces your opponents to underestimate you, right? Like most of the Hillary supporters in this country were pretty stoked when they realized Trump was going to win the primary. Most people assume that getting to go against the stupidest person in the running would be to her advantage. And I'll admit I was among them. I, I have to admit it. You can still hear it in the archives. But in underestimating his chances, I was also underestimating his stupidity. He was dumber than I was giving him credit for. And that made him damn near invincible. I mean, I mean, consider the arguments you've had with religious people in your life. When you go against a person who's as smart or smarter than you, that, that can be a little frustrating. Yeah, you know, especially if they're committed to their bullshit, you still have a slight advantage on account of your side representing the thing that's true about the universe, but it's still a tough fight. If you're smarter than your opponent, it tends to be a lot easier. You can knock down their arguments easier. They can't see the weaknesses in your rebuttals that a smarter person would exploit, and they're less likely to be fully informed on the topic. But if they're dumb enough, none of that shit matters. If they're too stupid to see that you've just knocked down their argument, you've wasted your time. They can plow ahead with any dumbass belief they care to wrap their arms around, and there ain't a goddamn thing you can do about it. I think we've all had that moment during a debate, online or otherwise, where we were like, oh, you're too stupid for logic to work. I'm leaving. And at that point, the stupid stopped making them weaker in the argument and instead made them invincible. And that's Trump and his supporters distilled down to their essence, invincible stupidity. The kind of stupidity that smart people can't even take seriously enough to mount a good fight against. I mean, think about it. We weren't out there knocking down Pizzagate level conspiracies in the last election because we assumed them to be too stupid for anybody to really believe. Even now, as it positions itself as the intellectual core of Trumpism and finds support among multiple Republican congressional candidates, it's hard to get anybody to take the QAnon threat seriously. 
right? Far too many people who never bothered to argue with random religious assholes online are under the false impression that nobody could possibly be stupid enough to believe that shit. The evidence to the contrary is overwhelming, and yet many rational people still dismiss it out of hand because they can't even comprehend the lack of comprehension one would need to buy into such grandiose claims on such gossamer strands of evidence, right? They'll say like, oh, no, 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 she just said that to get votes. I hear that constantly. For the first four years of this fucking podcast, we basically played the role of Cassandra. We drew attention to the growing chorus of reality-averse idiots that were playing an ever more central role in the conservative American politics. For four years, I was told by damn near everybody, even many of our loyal listeners, that I was paranoid, that I was making a mountain out of a molehill, that I was exaggerating to make the atheist and skeptical movement seem more vital to the public discourse. And for the last four years, I put on a Herculean effort to say any words other than I told you and so. So let me say it one more fucking time. Stupidity can kill. And the fact that so many people aren't willing to admit that's true is the only reason it is.